and you were like, you announced the winner, and the guy's like, man, he cheated. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> right, I, I stood up for you. Yeah. I, I genuinely think people saw your list and thought, oh, I really like the, I really like these kind of uh, Jean Claude Van Damme films. You've got two of them, so they kind of vote for it on that basis. And I had a, you I had, had a, a very Ghibli. buried list. Yeah, I had a Ghibli yeah, you had movie the, in there. The Ghibli film, yeah. Oh, Ghibli. Yeah. All right. Whatever. I think, uh, you're, yeah. I think you're going to you, win this one, though. I think you got Chef. Well, I, and I've got an X-Men film as well. But yeah. beyond that point, the list just kind of falls apart. Like, <laughs> I'm casually, thanks for it's a legitimate yeah. great film. But. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at this list, <laughs> and I see Chef. I'm like, ah, oh, let's go Chef. You shouldn't have let me go first. Yeah, you're right. But well, you should have let me take the West... You should let me take the West Wing, because then people would have seen that as cheating and not voted for me. I voted for you, your team, which would have then had Chef on it. Well, I'll let you have West Wing if yeah. I can take Fargo. I mean, yeah, I'll allow that. All right, then we'll add six. <laughs> okay. And that just sealed the deal for you. But, but Fargo is very good as well. Yeah. One of my I favorite shows Fargo. recently. So I'm going to bury the West Wing in beneath, like between Dr. Doolittle <laughs> and Beethoven. So okay. I'm going to start your list with... I mean, it was my first pick. If people are listening to this, it was my first pick. I'm going to start your list with 2012. <laughs> <laughs> and then go to Dr. Doolittle. Yep. <laughs> and then do uh, West Wing and then Beethoven and then Chef. No, if I bury Chef on the bottom, people will see it. So I'll end with no. I'm, I'll do an order. I'm joking. I'm, I'm, I'm already plotting out evil things. Doesn't matter what order you put it in. I'm still gonna win. <laughs> you, you know, in this movie, they built a section of a lake. Like they built a lake set. Oh, that's cool. And they shot it, it, it nice. I, 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 I thought the whole thing was on location. I mean, I, I guess the um, the tent sequences could well have been on a, on a set. Uh, but yeah, I didn't I didn't pick up on that. That's, that's well done. Good good for them. Yeah, and they said it was freezing. And the cow lives. How do you feel about the cow? Disappointed by the cow. <laughs> now... Uh, I, I liked that line. This cow disappoints me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the cow it's didn't want to do anything. That made me well, laugh. That was a good bit. Well, they, they, there's already a set method for feeding this, this crocodile, which is you have a cow stood by the edge of the water. So when they try to attract a crocodile, they don't do that. They put it in this winch and they hover it, and it doesn't do anything because it's a cow and a winch. What's it going to do? It can't can't walk. It can't really move much. It's just stuck in a wind. It's yeah. like a sling thing. Were they expecting, yeah, well, did they want it to swing? What about the scene where Brendan Greeson it... creeps on that girl? Oh, well, in town. Yeah, yeah, that was uncomfortable. That, that sets him up as being... He's up as being the character that, that dies like two-thirds of the way through. And the fact that our, our four heroes all survive. Him and Oliver Platt should have both died before the end of the film. Yeah. In any other... 90s creature feature they'd have been eaten by a giant crocodile long before the credits as would betty white probably would have been as well and um, for some reason adam arkin and mariska hargitay would have shown up like we're sorry come back oh no we've been eaten just for some kind of justice oh that'd be uh, awesome so yeah it would be great or like uh, she when when bridget Fonda picks up the, the crocodile and goes back in the flatbed they actually go to new york and they take the crocodile to the office Somehow, and they get it up. They get this thirty-foot crocodile up the escalator, up the elevator, or up the stairs, probably. Oh, hey, she and said. She said to meet us at back. See the <laughs> she had. She said to meet us at the park. Why is she? Kelly said to come here. <laughs> just this crocodile shadow appears over them. Cut to credits. That's yeah. how the film should end. Oh my gosh, I, that would be amazing. Now I gotta say, this movie's better than Primeval. Uh, Primeval. Orlando jo- Orlando Jones, who was really great in Evolution and Replacement. And then you had the dude from uh, Blade Trinity, Dracula, and the the oh the the lady from uh, Replacements, the cheerleader, a Replacements reunion, yes. and you see the Gustav for about three seconds. You're just saying a bunch of things I haven't seen. Fair enough. <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll run five things from you by you, and you got to say yes or no if if you, they get your uh, if you don't hate them. So okay. the scene where uh, Brendan Gleeson's holding a toe and Oliver Platt. Says, hey, your buddy seemed taller last time. I like that. That's one of the lines that I enjoyed. Okay. I feel like it, it wasn't very, uh, it wasn't very realistic in terms of how Brendan Gleeson would react to his friend who got eaten. Uh, but yeah, he seemed taller. I liked that line. Okay, you're supposed to say start in karate. Yeah, I enjoyed that as well, actually. Uh, I, you know, Oliver, Oliver Platt saying that he's this karate expert, and then Brendan Gleeson just punching him in the face. It's nice, because I didn't like either of these characters. I wanted to see both of them get beaten up. So if one of them has to hit the other one, then so then so be it. Yeah, what about the line <laughs> where Oliver Platt says, when the crocodile shows up, and he says, I feel very foolish here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I don't know who he was talking to. He's just kind of talking to himself, talking to the camera. It's a little staged. I wasn't entirely sure what he was doing in the water. At- I don't his whole character of like he wants to be judged by crocodiles because they're godlike. Uh, I, I, 
just what didn't get behind that at all. It's just it's just an irritating person. Yeah, so that's a no. So we're two and one. Well, it it's a no because he didn't get eaten by the crocodile at that point. That's exactly when he should have been oh, eaten. Oh, that'd have been so cool. Because he, he backs slowly, slowly back away to the helicopter and somehow gets into the helicopter by distracting it with this inflatable thing he had in his belt. And then the crocodile grabs the helicopter, should have pulled it down and eaten the whole thing. That no. would have been a much... That, that's where that scene was going. And then he got away. Never happened. Uh, so I guess that's a no on the Jaws 2 uh, homage. What was the Jaws 2 homage? Remember jo- he pulls the helicopter down in Jaws 2, and then this one, the crocodile grabs it? Okay, yeah. Yes, like, that's an homage to Deep Blue Sea, if you ask me. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but they actually kill a ton of people in Deep Blue Sea. They do, and it's wonderful. And everyone should go back and listen to our episode on it. All right. Oh, that was, that was a good one. All right, so we're two and two right now. The yep. last one is his dancing, Oliver Platt's dancing in the tent where he's playing loud music to attract the crocodile. No, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> just, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's a big no. That, everything Oliver Platt does in that scene, uh, you know, we alluded to earlier with the can she stay, we were hoping to mate. Just everything about that is uncomfortable to watch and awful uh so that's a no all right now what about also this... a no is brendan gleason's use of uh his his insult to people is you are a mental yeah i think you are a mental a mental what it's not a noun <laughs> so we keep doing all right then what about ebert's <laughs> review whether the movie was intended at any point to be a serious monster thriller i cannot say in its present form it's an uneasy compromise between a gore fest and a comedy Sort of a failed anaconda. One peculiar aspect <laughs> is the sight of an expensive cast in such a cheap production. It's gruesome and then camp and then satirical and then sociological. And then it pauses for a little wit- witty intellectual repartee. Occasionally the crocodile leaps out of the water and snatches victims from the shore, looking un- uncannily like a very big green product from the factory where they make Barney toys. This is the kind of movie that actors discuss in long, sad talks with their agents. I'd never heard a more crippling insult than... A failed anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> As if anaconda was a successful anaconda. Now, he loves anaconda. Uh, he does. He is he is incorrect with regards to his opinions on anaconda. <laughs> right, I got, I got um, one more bombshell to lay on you. Hector's surname in this movie, Seer, is an anagram of the word cry, a nod to the famous tale that crocs weep with false remorse while devour- devouring their prey. I mean, it's true that it's an anagram of cry. It's only three letters long. It's a lazy anagram, if that is the case. Uh, it's it's a strange surname. It, it kind of feels w- Welsh. C-Y-R, just because it's got a Y in it. Uh, I mean, it is... Uh, Brendan Gleeson's character's surname is supposed to be... Uh, it's, it's Keo. Is that an anagram or something? I don't think so. Why would they do it with just one character? What are all of them? Let's see, Keo. I'm looking at it right now. It's almost enough, but there's a K in it and no N. <laughs> Let's see. So Bill Pullman plays Jack Well. Well. That's Swell. Yep, Swell. That's an anagram of Swell. So you <laughs> could say Water Swells. Okay, if you want to. What do you think? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> not not going to allow it. All right, Kelly. What about well, Kelly? That's, that's, that's David Kelly's surname. Oh, yeah. Um, Dang it. All right. Well, I think we're out of it. What about Hank? What about Hank? Knock? Hank. Yeah. No. This this is a a losing battle, I think, Mark. (laughs) All right. Last but not least, Walt Lawson. What can we do with that? Lawson. What character was Walt Lawson? He's the cop that gets his head bit off. Okay. No, no, that was was, um, was Burke. Well, then I'm not sure who Walt Lawson is. (laughs) Was Was he the guy at the start? Was he the one who got... Gets eaten, gets cut in half. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Maybe. Lawson. We're going to do Lawson. Now, uh, last, last question. Why is this movie called Lake Placid? <laughs> that's a very good question, because it's not set on Lake Placid. They even mention in the film that Lake Placid is the name of a different lake. And they wanted to call this one Lake Placid because it doesn't move very much. It's got a still lake, which is unusual for lakes that are connected to the ocean. Uh, but there's a still lake but Lake Placid was already taken. It's a silly name. Uh, I they could have just if they just called it Crocodile, probably be a better film, better film name. Yeah, Anac- it works for Anaconda. Croc Lake. But, but yeah, Lake Placid is just it's a confusing title. 
It's that's not where it is. So for years, they know I thought, that they say that. For years, <laughs> I thought say this movie the film. took place in Washington, not Maine. Did you know that? Because I was thinking uh, Asian crocodile. That's on the other side of the country. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So the, the the crocodile crossed the crossed the ocean from Asia and then crossed the country. Or did it go up and over uh, Canada or down and through the canal? Uh, wait, are, are you saying the uh, Panama Canal? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh man, it it had to go it had to go one of those ways, or it had to go across land. And I'd reckon people would have someone would have seen a thirty foot crocodile walking across America. Yeah. So that I think, would have had to have happened. I think someone just got the croc, and like what happens in Florida when they're they get pythons that get too big, they just throw them out in the woods. Someone just yeah. dumped the crocodile. Well, they chucked it down in the toilet, and it came up in someone else's toilet. That would admit. Like in New York City, it, it got into the sewers in San Francisco. I don't know, uh, and then just went through. There's a giant sewer system that goes from there all the way to Maine. Maybe this and us are in the same world because there's the underworld yeah. in us. So now, it just crawled through there. Was it a tooth that they found and took back to that museum or was it a pair of scissors? I can't remember. Tooth. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> I found a tooth and some scissors. Man, that, that went way over my head. Where'd they get those scissors? All right. Um, I know. That's that, a whole different podcast. Yeah, that's a. I actually wrote the date on that. I, I figured out they would like how much laundry they'd have to do for all those people. <laughs> would, yeah. How would how, well, for? Hey, were you factoring the the rabbit feces that would have got everywhere? Yeah, and the trash, and like the, yeah. they had to get rid of the rabbits, just feed them the alligators. That oh, there it is, crocodiles feeding them. There we go. There's a there's a sewer, as a sub sewer from the us world down another level is where the thirty foot crocodiles go. We just solved the mystery. We, there we go, all fixed. I love that my wife can only hear half of this conversation, and I just want to have to try and figure out what the other half is. And <laughs> where we've been, we're freewheeling through various films. <laughs> well, this was fun, man. I think we covered enough of Lake Placid, right? Because there's not much yeah. under the surface. <laughs> We've been recording for roughly the same length as the film. So yeah. yeah. I mean, it, this was good. We did it, right? We did. We'd never have to talk about it again. And and we're moving on to... To Piranha. Oh, my gosh. We're making a vast improvement. A massive improvement. Now, I, I'm i really worried to hear that... I don't think I'd show this to my wife, uh, Piranha 3D. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see if, if I'm joined by, by mine. Oh Jesus! But this was fun, man. I this we made it work, right? We had a good, I had a good time on this one. Yeah, I'm always happy to watch these terrible films. And then I'm going to have this this very entertaining conversation afterwards. I like this plat going on. That was fun. It's a good plat. Bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, so for movies, films, and flicks, I am Mark Hoffmeyer. Thank you for joining us, Jay Cluett. This is wait, I'm saying it Thanks again. Thanks for having me. This movie messed me up. So hey guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. So that was Minor Mark's discussion on Lake Placid. Before we, I find it very interesting that uh, we, on the show we talked about the Godzilla franchise and Jurassic Park: The Lost World, two things that came up on last week's show, Godzilla vs. Biollante. Uh, but hey, these it's one of the wonderful things about the world. Uh, so, one thing I need to do before I close the show is how is Lake Placid like Deep Blue Sea? Well, I have a, a very short list. Because uh, as I've mentioned in the show, it's not a film I ever want to watch again, so I didn't enjoy it. Uh, so, Lake Placid released in 1999, just like Deep Sea. Features a guy being bitten in half. Uh, there's a helicopter which dangles a creature, in this case a cow, not Stellan Skarsgård, who's used as part of a plan and the helicopter gets destroyed. Uh, a rich guy arrives via air transport. They investigate something that's been in an animal's mouth. In this case, it's a toe rather than a license plate. There's a dance party scene. There's a urinating scene. Uh, they tranquilize a giant animal. Uh, Kelly, Bridget Fonda, keeps on being surprised by dead heads being thrown at her, similarly to how Carter is surprised by the dead Jim head. There's a climactic animal explosion with the smaller crocodile. And uh, the bear, the bear scene in this, was seemed to be mid-monologue when the beast emerged and dragged it into the water, just like Russell Franklin in Deep Blue Sea. So, not a very Deep Blue Sea adjacent film, but close enough. And how deep and how blue is Lake Placid? Well, not very. Uh, 
Deep Blue Sea, of course, is 